My name is Jordy Marshall. I'm the coordinator for the Red Row Project here in Cape Breton, and I have a colleague who is a coordinator for the mainland of Nova Scotia. The Red Row Project is an anti-substance abuse program created by our chiefs in 2012. The philosophy of the program is that if we live our life aligned with the Creator and we live, if we live it on a sacred path. And um, so a lot of what we do is we work with the youth within our communities who are chosen by their directors or they're chosen by their principals to lead the program for a year. And they learn a lot about their culture and who they are because we believe that culture identity play, plays a big part in uh, combat and substance abuse. We have our elders and our culture camps throughout the year. So throughout the year we have our culture camps and we invite our elders to come in and to teach the youth about who they are through um, one of the activities that they do is to learn how to build a teepee and how to how to build a sweat lodge and then they go and have a sweat lodge ceremony. Um, recently we took them out and had taught them how to go ice fishing and just bringing these opportunities in with the youth to learn about who they are from the rich resources of which we have in our communities who still carry these teachings. I think it's an opportunity for those who who haven't had the opportunity to do so. and also gives an opportunity to youth to learn about who they are, but also to become leaders within their communities to encourage those who do not know about their culture to encourage them that it is okay to learn about it and it's okay to be taken part of that journey to carry that on for our future generations. And so it's it's creating leaders within people within our communities to create ourselves stronger and building that bridge and that connection between the youth and the elders is a powerful thing in itself. Being witness to the connections and the relationships that we build with these students. And so how I measure success is their character and them still building on that journey of which they started from being on the Red Row Project and taking that within themselves and to continue to learn in their lifelong journey. You'll see people who are polo dancing. You'll see people who are now comfortable regularly going sweats. Or you'll see people who are now comfortable to approach an elder. Or people inquiring more about basket making. Or um, who feel encouraged, even for myself too, like I'm a coordinator. But I feel more encouraged now to be able to go ice fishing because I've learned from the people who, um, I learned from the people who are the best at doing it within our community and know the exact protocol and respect for the, for the animal. I, I really enjoy seeing the youth um, getting together even after they're done with the program. And they're still friends after not like not being part of the group for a couple years so it's those lifelong relationships that they build amongst each other is really nice to see because that's what's going to help them as well in part of their journey of walking on the red road is because when you walk on the red road in these times of days it's a very um it's not, it's not the most busiest road to walk. It, it's, it can be quite lonely because of the, what youth are facing today because everyone in that age is getting into drinking and is getting into drugs. And um, So it's, it's nice to see that they're able to support one another on their journey and, um, and to be able to feel encouraged to continue on. Indigenous education is concepts of the reflections of who we are and to be able to feel encouraged and proud to be able to teach that within our children or to our children and, and within our schools. And 
to be able to say, you know what, who we are, there is nothing wrong with it, and to open our eyes to the to our world view of who we were and who we are today, and to be able to put them together. Indigenous education to me is being able to live through that in the biggest and best potential, but to be inclusive and encompassing of every aspect of who we are today. But that also, if you were to look at that in a model, I see a circle and the, the, the way I can think of it and the teachings that we learned from the Red Row Project is the four directions and everyone who has a role there's, there's the East who represent like the babies and, um, and the, like the children, small children. And then the South who represent the youth and the West who represent the adults and the North who represent the elders. And when, you, when, you're, when you're able to fulfill all the roles and all the teachings within all of these cycles with all these directions, that is indigenous education. That that is knowing how to, where to, and how was in that whole cycle of life, because that is what it's all about. And so, when we indigenize our education, it's about being able to fulfill who we are as people, and to not to conform to the ideas of what may have worked for another culture, because it doesn't, and it hasn't, and it won't. I would like to see, I guess, to be in, in a sense of a visionary, I guess, like to, it's like I see sort of a um, a collective of, of people just to gather around and say, this isn't working and we need to find a way to make it work. And so in order to transform into something new, we need to be able to have a steady foundation to clear and to be able to build new. And um, so I believe if we, could come to, if we could come together as many nations across Canada, um, it'd be nice to see how everyone's teachings can come and formulate something that'll work, that is more holistic for everyone. And how I'd like to see education change in the future is to be able to be more inclusive, more loving, more family oriented, uh, more nurturing for the child because a lot of how I see in my experiences from being a student and also working in the school is that there's a whole institutionalized concept and that is what we know and that is what's, that's the standard. But I know that there is um, a lot of nurturing that goes on within the school because there, there, there are indigenous teachers within the school and like, let's say, Eskazoni, who are, who are able to take their teachings to teach the children to be that nurturing person because they're with them for a long time in a day. So that's, that's what the ch child needs to help them to feel comfortable and to feel strong and proud enough to learn about whatever they need to learn in their education. So I guess what I want to say is that um, if, we re if we truly want to create change and to create positive change within our education, then we must not be able, we must not lead ourselves in fear but to be able to speak truthfully and be proud of everything that we are every step of the way. Really stick to the four directions. Like your resources are within your communities and if not, then there's communities elsewhere. And I think this will be great for that because we're part of that circle of resources. So I have resources that, I, that I'm that um, I have resources that are elders who are 
great for source for help within our cause. I have adults who are great resources. I have youth who are great resources. And we have children who come and they just bring joy when we give them when we give them t shirts or we give them promotional items and them being encouraged, they're part of that circle too. They're they're the future. So if, if we're able to see that and to find and map out within this model of who our resources are, then that's that's the best way we can do to figure out what we need to do because what it's about is it's about um, our family of who we are and, and our language migma roots from the word family or kin so that's the way we see it we're going to treat each other as one big family and when we need help then we're going to figure out ways and the resources that we have within ourselves within that kinship to ensure that we can continue on on our journey. I guess on a personal level, the impacts of my journey of working with this is that I wasn't really walking on the red rope before. And um, when I learned I got this job, it kind of, it went like, it, it like changed my life. So I had to, um, I had no choice. I, it's not that I didn't have a choice. It kind of led me to where I should have been going and so I didn't want to be someone who was teaching youth about the, about the bad things about drugs and to encourage them to stay off them and to be on them at the same time so I really had to reevaluate on who I was and my identity as a person and I feel so strong and so connected to our creator when we're in ceremony and when we're sitting there and we have, we're setting up a sacred fire, teaching the youth how to set up a sacred fire, when we're getting together and we learn about who we are from our elders, no matter what it is, or just sitting around and having fun and laughing. And those are all powerful moments that a person who, especially at that young age, who cherishes for the rest of their lives. So how it impacted me was it gave me the opportunity to figure out parts of my life on how I too can walk on the red road. And uh, it was a struggle, but I, uh, I, I really, my life has really changed since then. And uh, it's continuing and I, I take my, I take responsibility as one of the leaders for this program to continually to better myself as a person so I can help these youth who are trying to figure out who they are to help them to figure out who they are. We have representation within all of the all of the reservations in Nova Scotia, so within the 13 bands. So there's two representatives per band, so there's 26 youth each year. We meet quarterly, but they we that's more to get them to recharge but what they do is that they have project funds of two thousand dollars and where they implement um, projects and events within their communities to help support the program and the visions of which they have they'll do cultural events or um, they'll do um, like crafts or sports with the youth just to to keep them to encourage them and they'll talk to them and they'll be there on the uh, on the red road with them but it's not the 2000 isn't for employing other youth it's more so just project funds and supplies and um it's say if they wanted an elder to come in so they'll have money to have the elder to come in and to teach them they're able to take what they learned from their camps and to be able to incorporate that into their daily life and into the job that they're working with the people within their communities and to encourage them. So one of the things that we're doing this year is, um, this is a new project that we're gonna be doing, is that we're getting all the youth ready to be able to carry their own medicine bundle so they can go and they can conduct ceremony amongst their peers. So we're working very closely with our elders to make sure that we can do this in the most respectful way so we can ensure that they're, they're keeping that part of our 
lives or a part of our culture alive is that yes they're going to go out and they're going to conduct ceremonies with their friends or with their peers or with um, people in their community so, and to take part in that that's going to be the, the helpful long run and a service to our community to ensure that the opportunity is there for them to to be encouraged to walk on the red road.